all of you welcome to the session today our topic is measurement of high temperatures see how can we measure high temperatures what instruments we need to require to measure the temperatures let us see here the study of process of measurement of high temperatures is called pyrometry the device which is used to measure high temperatures is called pyrometers the radiation emitted by a black body depends only solely on its temperature so let us see types of pyrometers here types of radiation pyrometers so number 1 is total radiation pyrometers this measures total radiation and temperature is deduced applying stefan's law already we discuss what is stefan's law now the second type of radiation pyrometer is optical or spectral pyrometers so these are instruments that are designed to measure the intensity of radiation emitted by the source in a particular wavelength range in comparison with the radiation emitted by a standard lamp and thereby determine the temperature of the source making use of either wien's displacement law or flank's law that means so what we are doing here we are comparing the temperature with the known source to the unknown source here so let us see where advantages of pyrometers they can be used to measure any high temperatures even when the hot body is inaccessible to us we can estimate the temperatures of even the sun and the distant stars yes so this we know that uh, stars and sun are inaccessible to us even though we can estimate the temperatures of them with the help of pyrometers and now the second one is there need not be any physical contact between the pyrometer and hot body see there with the help of this instruments we can measure the temperature even though there is no physical contact between the pyrometer and the hot body the pyrometer need not be even kept in close vicinity with the hot body okay next third one is the radiation loss of stefan of wien and of flank are valid or at all temperatures and hence there will be no difficulty in extrapolation so with this so next our topic we are going to talk about disappearing filament optical pyrometer so let us see the construction and uh, the working of disappearing filament optical pyrometer now we are going to talk about disappearing filament optical pyrometer so this device is designed by i morse morse and further it is improved by further it is improved by holborn holborn and uh, and uh, carbon further it is improved by holborn and carbon okay so see here this pyrometer consists of as shown in figure telescope it consists of telescope t fitted with an objective o at one end objective o at one end and uh, the an eyepiece e at the another end see there there are these two things one is object lens and here it is telescope so another end and uh, the distance between the object and eyepiece the distance between the object and eyepiece can be varied can be varied by 
rock and pinion arrangement see the screw is there so that is this arrangement is called rock and pinion arrangement so with the help of this screw we can uh, we can move this object and the telescope together and away okay so next thing is uh, as shown in figure here the cross wire of the telescope here the cross wire we know that telescope contain cross wire but instead of taking cross wire in the telescope that one is really replaced by an electric bulb that is here the cross wire is replaced by an electric lamp otherwise electric bulb s see there this is what a bulb what i am taking here so it is represented by s now the filament f of the lamp is connected to a battery see there which is connected to the battery and also as well uh, uh, key and also rear start is there rear start and along with uh, a meter so we know that what are the functions of rear start with the help of rear start we can vary the current flowing through the bulb and with the help of a meter we can measure the current uh, which one is flowing in the circuit okay now so sim and uh, and one more thing is here what i am using i am taking d1 and d2 where the d1 d2 are diaphragms which limit the a cone of radiation entering the telescope see there which with the help of this diaphragms we can control or we can limit the uh, rays which are coming from the source okay so next thing is uh, where uh, uh, one more thing what i am using here i am using a red glass filter g capital g is there placed uh, so which one is located before the telescope so this is what g so this is what red glass filter so with help of this one we can observe the things okay now the hot body h here if you observe there here i'm taking hot body h so it's placed in front of the object see this hot body is placing in front of the object so this is all about the construction of disappearing filament of optical pyrometer so let us see working of this instrument let us see how it with the help of this how can we measure the temperature let us see now the objective lens of the pyrometer see that this is what objective lens of the pyrometer so here which is directed towards the hot body h so with help of uh, screw r so which is moving towards the hot body as a result what happened as a result the position of the object is so adjusted that the image of hot body the image of hot body is focused on the filament see that with the help of this object so we can focus the image of the object on the bulb on the filament okay on the filament right the image is viewed with the help of ipc e so this image what is the image is formed on the filament can be observed by the e eyepiece which is here with the help of red glass filter red glass filter the image of the filament the image of the filament superimposed with the illuminate red background appears in the field of view through the eyepiece through the eyepiece now now what happened what i am doing here now the filament is heated so that means how now when the switch is on when the key is on in the circuit diagram current flows to the filament as a result the temperature of the filament is increased that means the filament is heated further the current through the filament is adjusted in such a way that the filament just disappears against the background again as the background we know that when the current passing through this filament the temperature or heat of the filament is increased so uh, in such a way that the filament just disappeared again as the background the current in the filament is recorded with the help of a meter uh, the current in the filament is recorded with the help of a meter what we are taking in the circuit diagram and uh, 
so the since both the filament and image are equally bright both the filament and also image of hot body equally bright they must be emitting equal amount of energy per unit second and hence they must be at the same temperatures all right so when they both equally bright then the temperature then the temperatures measured by the ammeter is equal to the temperature of this hot body that means what we are doing we are we are taking we are comparing with the unknown temperature with the known temperatures of uh, this filament understand now so let us see what principle we are going to use in this experiment the temperature of filament t can be calculated by the following formula we know that uh, so the formula i equal to i equal to a plus b capital t plus c t square c t square so with the help of this equation we can measure the temperature of hot body so where i is we know that current flowing through the circuit diagram and where a b c are constants the values of these constants can be determined by calibrating the instrument against known temperatures in the following way using various bodies whose temperatures are known accurately the corresponding ammeter reading are recorded when filament disappears so using this equation so we can solve three readings a b c are calculated see that with the help of this instrument with the help of this instrument we can measure the temperatures from 600 degree centigrade to 1500 degree centigrade with the help of this instrument so we can measure the temperature from 600 degree centigrade to 1500 degree centigrade the range can be raised up to 2700 degree centigrade the range also raised up to 27 degree 2700 degree centigrade by using one more external device that is what rotating sector which cuts down a known fraction of radiation okay so this is all about a disappearing filament optical pyrometer so let us see few advantages are there the optical pyrometer has simple structure see there it is very simple structure what we are, what we are taking we are taking only telescope and objective lens and eyepiece in stop taking crossfades what i am taking there i am taking a bulb along with the filament and uh, where 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 i am taking hot body uh, what what which i am going to find out the temperature of this body okay and one more electric circuit is connected to the filament so this is completely very simple arrangement no part of instrument needs to come into the contact of hot body hence the pyrometer can be successfully used to measure the temperatures above the melting point of many metal so here so we don't uh, uh, take uh, we don't here the need not to take uh, come into the contact of hot body so Uh, the uh, and uh, the another point is the heat image of hot body need not be large we know that so there is no need to be get large image from the hot body so the reason is that the image of the filament f of the lamp may coincide with the any part of the image of hot body okay next thing is even if the experimental object is not a black body even if the experimental object is not in black body the corrections may be easily applied which are relatively smaller okay so this is all about a disappearing filament pyrometer so very simple structure and very simple formula i equal to a plus b t plus c t square where i is the current flowing through the circuit and where t is the temperature what we are going to measure of hot body